a couple of times I've done my last couple of seminars, it's been pretty rowdy, a lot of a lot of drinking and not everyone paying attention. So it's actually nice to be able to speak to a lot of people that are actually listening. <laughs> so uh, uh, <laughs> so I want to get into a little bit of inshore fishing. You guys got an inshore tournament coming up here a um, couple weeks now. And uh, we're going to go over a little bit of trout, redfish, snook. Uh, I know there's flounder on that list, sheephead, and black drum. But right now, what's actually going, we're not even using white bait at this this point in time due to the cold fronts and all the different weather weather patterns that are uh, happening. So my rig that I'm using right now, when I head out, I'm buying a bunch of shrimp. I'm buying probably 12 to 14 dozen shrimp, and I'm hitting the ledges anywhere between four to six feet, the drop-offs. Uh, we're getting a lot of trout, a lot of redfish, and I'm using a number one or a number two circle uh, with a split shot about, I'd say about six inches from the, from the hook. And uh, we're hooking the shrimp as you normally would through the head. And um, I also, I want to say this as I'm speaking, and you guys hear something, you have a question, please feel free to raise your hand and we can answer that question. We don't have to wait to the end. But uh, so, where I'm doing the best at right now is finding some good rock piles, finding a good drop off. Right now, the, the, one of the main spots I'm fishing right now has a drop off of about six or seven feet, drops down about 14, almost 20 feet. So we're getting on the edge of that, throwing the shrimp up towards it and kind of working it like you would almost work a, a worm when you're bass fishing. You got that little split shot on there and you're working up and down, not letting it sit. Now, if you do let it sit and it stays on the bottom, that's where you're gonna probably come across more sheep head and more of your black drum. But we're popping it up and down off those rocks and catching a lot of trout. A lot of them right now have been juvenile between about 15, 14, 15 inches and then all of a sudden, it could just be 30, 45 minutes into that bite, the gator trout just show up. They show up and they start eating. We start catching gator trout one after another. So I'm using 25 pound leader. Now I started to bring it down a little bit, the 20 pound leader. And like I said, I'm actually using it on a 3000 reel, rod and reel. And this is my setup here. If I don't break the tip here. This is what I was saying about having the split shot. You guys can see the split shot. And I'm about probably six inches from there. And if you're coming across the sheep head, you maybe want to go down to a number one uh, circle hook. That's all I use is circle hooks. Uh, bring it down because, you know, there's, their mouths are a little bit smaller. So you can actually get in, get the sheep head going. Have been catching the sheep head, the trout, and the rat reds all almost exactly in the same spot. So... Uh, it, even if you're fishing, you don't, you're not exactly on that structure and fishing those drop-offs like that, you can find little deeper holes on the flats. The winter time is the best time to find your deep holes on the flats. You want to get out there on that negative low tide, excuse me, get out there on that negative low tide and find those deeper holes on the flats. That's, as well, that's where you can get some of the sheephead, excuse me, some of the trout, some of the uh, flounder as well. With the flounder, I actually like to use a quarter ounce jig head on a shrimp and you're doing the same thing, you're bouncing it off the bottom. Find those sandy holes, the flounder have been pretty good. I know I'm speaking, I'm fishing out of the, the Tampa Bay area. I know it's a little slightly different with you guys here, but I'm all the way up in the bay. And uh, that's the, the quarter ounce jig head or even using the same, the same rig I've been using for the trout. Those, that exact rig right there is what's doing the best up in the bay with the redfish, the sheep head, the trout. Now, when you get up in the, I, I, lately I've been in the river, trolling the river, believe it or not, and I'm using a pretty big plug, and this is for the big snook. Give me one second here. Now, this is a rig that we're using when we're trolling. You can use this rig when you're trolling in the river, coming out of the river, trolling canals, but this is a bomber. This is actually 
uh, the Magnum, which is a bigger one that you get a stretch out of it between six and 12 feet, depending on where you end up putting the rod at. But this is what the ideal, we're using a little bit of a heavier stick here on a 5,000. This is the ideal rig that we're using when we're coming out of the river trolling. And this is, you're gonna get the, the big snook, you're gonna get the big jacks, but I'm using 40 pound leader on this because these are bigger fish. And you're fishing around the structures, these fish are smart. As soon as they hit that bait, they know where to go. They're gonna take you straight to the pilings, straight to the structure. But this is some of the fun, this is the fun fishing that I'm doing when we're getting out of the river. It's, it's you, you put up two or three rods, and in the river where I'm at, and coming out of the Hillsborough River, we usually start about ricks on the river, and we start trolling our way out. It's a slow troll all the way till you get to the mouth. And uh, that's been the most productive way to catch the bigger snook, or should I say, hook the bigger snook, because it's they're pretty, when you when these fish eat, it's hard to get them to the boat, but that's, that's ideally your best rig for that. And you can do this as well in the canals, we found out that, you know, you if you go fish the canals at nighttime and you have these underwater lights like you do here, the fish are usually loaded on them. But you got to be careful. When you pull up to these docks, you, you can easily spook these fish. So what we've come to find out is if you just do a slow troll, you can almost just be on your trolling motor. You don't even have to be on your engine. You can be on your trolling motor doing a slow troll as you're going through the canals and have two rods out the back. And we found that these fish are now coming off the lights and attacking those baits, those big dive plugs. It's been very, it's actually worked very, really well. Uh, learned from an older gentleman a couple years back, saw him do it, asked questions, and uh, were able to find out a little bit of his knowledge. Because I can tell you this, I've been fishing, I've probably been fishing since I was about nine or ten years old. My dad got me into it which is a, the best thing that could have happened to me. And one thing I know as a fisherman, I've only been a captain now two years full time. But one thing I've learned is every time you go out, you could go with a new group of friends, maybe another friend brings a buddy, there's always something you can learn. And you always gotta keep your ears open because there's a little, a slightly different technique, maybe a favorite color, something along those lines that you can pick up from someone else you start using it your way, it actually starts working and starts to produce. So that's one of the big things that you gotta always be willing to learn more because there's always so much to learn. I can tell you that much. And uh, I wanna thank my dad for getting me out there because he actually made me, not even made me, I fell in love with fishing at 10. He bought a boat when I was 12, upgraded another boat till I finally got to the age of 18 and I financed a boat at the worst interest rate you can never finance a boat at. <laughs> and I paid probably four times the amount that I should have paid for the boat. But it was my boat. I had a little tower boat. And what really got me into fishing with that is I started taking buddies out. You know, you go with your friends. You're fishing all the time. And then you get back to the boat ramp and you're like, man, if I had some clients out today, they'll be pretty happy about the day we had. So that kept happening and kept happening. And uh, actually before I was an actual fisherman, I was a barber for 14 years. And my business failed as a barber because I fell in love with fishing so much, I kept taking time away from the barber shop and I was spending time on the water. So when I finally got to that point, I said, well, it's time to put the clippers up and let's go as a captain, a full-time captain. And believe it or not, in the in the uh, well, excuse me, in the room today, my teacher, Captain Randy Maxson, is in the house. He was my teacher, the best teacher I've ever had in anything, and I want to be, give you a big shout out. Thank you very much, sir, for teaching me all the knowledge as a captain. <laughs> Amazing teacher at Adams Marine. So you know, we're talking about the the same thing with redfish and drum. Ideally, they're almost the same. They're almost the same fish. They're a cousin, so they're going to eat typically the same way. So you want to, like I said, you want to get those fish, put that little split shot on there, keep that bait on the bottom, and you can stay with that. So fishing for those fish, you're going to get you the same thing: sheephead, redfish, and drum. 
And I want to move on a little bit to, uh, I know it's not in the tournament, the fish is not in the tournament, but I want to talk a little bit about Triple Tail, uh, especially with you guys being out here fishing this area and leading out to the Gulf or back my area around McDill Air Force Base, we've been doing really well with the Triple Tail. With the Triple Tail, you can kind of treat them like Cobia, where you can come up to the, the piling or the sign, look, you can look around, see if you see them at the top. Just because you don't see them doesn't mean they're not there. They could be sitting down at the bottom. Me personally, if I know I caught Triple Tail at a certain piling and I've had luck there before, more than likely, I'm going to that spot, not looking for them, but I'm fishing that spot like I know they're there. Same way, there's two different ways I like to fish those. <clears throat> is with the split shot, but I also like the bobber. I like to put either a greenback or a shrimp on a bobber, so you can kind of control where your bait's at. If you're fishing those triple tail, you know you want to be as close as you can to that pilot. So I like to get either a greenback or a shrimp, Flip it out there depending on what your tide or your wind's doing, and you want to keep that bobber as close as you can to that pipe. If they're there, you'll know right away. And if you get hit and you miss it, don't worry. That fish is going right back to where he was. They're probably one of the dumbest fish in the water. I'm not even joking. We missed one three times. Three times the fish came up, missed the hook. After the third time, the fish was no longer hanging around the pipe. The fish came up to the back of the engine and was rubbing himself on the propeller. I'm not even lying. So now at this point, I said, well, if he's right there, just drop it down. So he dropped his bait right on the back of the boat. The triple tail finally ate the entire hook, landed him, was about a 21 inch triple tail. Was a, a, an awesome fish. And I just recently was taught how to fish for triple tail. Uh, it was last year. and. Someone, I went out with someone one time, they showed me how to do it, and then I went out a couple times after that, used the same kind of technique someone taught me, and it worked. And then I took clients out, and it worked as well, and I told buddies, and they've gone, and same thing, it works. So uh, the triple tail, especially when you come out of the golf here too, always, anything you see in the water floating, crab traps, pilings, signs, check them. And, I, and just recently, you know, it used to be kind of a seasonal thing, but these fish, where I'm at, these fish stay there year, year round. Some, some months are definitely way better than other months, but, you know, that's, you just got to, you, when you go out, especially like myself, if I'm going to go out scouting and we're going to go after redfish, we're going to go after snook, we do our own, do everything that we normally do, go through our whole routine. And then when there's time, we got some extra time, and we're going to go mess with triple tail, I'll always try it. Even if you spend 15, 20 minutes, hit four or five poles, if it works, it works. But just give it a try. It doesn't hurt to try. Now, another thing I want to go over, we did trout the snook right now. You can catch bait at the Skyway where we're at. We drive all the way to the Skyway. I put in at Andy. We drive to the Skyway to catch the white bait. Because that's where it's at right now, that's where it's easy. Now, I went out the other day, had a boatload full of white bait and 15 dozen shrimp. And the shrimp outfished the white bait all day long. But there are certain spots in the bay where you can go to, get a whole bat load full of chum, throw it out, get those snook going. That's what, that's what you're gonna need to catch the snook. Not saying they won't hit the shrimp, but they also will hit. I like to throw the paddle tail, all white paddle tail on a quarter ounce jig head. Can you guys see that? If I don't want to unhook it, hook anybody. Oh. <laughs> Caught him. I almost took his wine glass right out of his hand. But I'm using a paddle tail with a quarter ounce jig head. This is what you can go after the snook with in the winter time, not having to use white bait. This has been very productive for myself. Now you can use all, all kinds of different colors. Um, me, my best luck I've had is with the white paddle tail. They always say you gotta match the hatch, but as you can tell on that big bomber I have is neon pink and that's not matching any hatch, but it does work. So let me put this one right here. 
I don't want to take away your wine glass. <laughs> so in the wintertime, that's the thing, though. With the snook, you can, you can go artificial heavy. There's a lot of my buddies right now that are fishing, and they're not even using live bait. They'll go out there and they'll crush them. Now, what helps is if you do have a little bit of white bait, you start chumming, and you throw your bat out, and the snook, like, do what they normally do, come up and start smoking the top of the water. At that time, if you want to get them on artificial, you throw right in the middle of that chum, it works just as well as throwing a piece of white bait on there. But any, like, if you guys, just like I feel like you guys feel the same way, catching a fish on an artificial is just so much better than catching it on a live bait. If you can, if you can actually trick a fish to bite a piece of plastic and think that it's a piece of bait and you rip his lip off, because that's the one thing I love about artificial is that you actually get to set the hook. I grew up watching Bill dance, and that's all I wanted to do as, a, as I was younger, growing up. And I get a lot of clients from up north that all they do is bass fish. And they got a circle hook on. Well, it's the one thing they want to do. They want to start setting the hook like crazy. You're not going to catch a fish if you yank it like that on a circle hook. But I do keep J hooks on the boat because there's some people that just can't break the habit. So you switch them up to a J hook, they're right there in the game, ready to go. So I, uh, I also, one of my favorite, favorite artificials, I didn't bring it just in case it wasn't closed all the way, but the new penny gulp shrimp. It is by far my favorite artificial to throw, especially in the winter time, especially fishing the river. I fish the Hillsborough River a ton, and we literally can buy a bucket of those and use them all night long. That new penny gulp, that scent works. That smell definitely, definitely works. And you can use the bigger one or the smaller one. Me, I have better luck with the bigger. I think it's the three inch uh, gulp. And I put that on a quarter ounce jig head. It, it, I personally haven't noticed a color of the jig head change the bite. So it didn't really matter. You can put a white, red, lime green. It doesn't matter, all those work. That's, that's, now I'm not a huge artificial guy, but if I go to artificial, I'm using the new penny, I'm using the, the white paddle tail, and when we do trolling, I'm going to those bomber plugs. Not saying that the Yozuri's or, you know, the other plugs, this is a decent, affordable plug. It's still probably the bigger ones, the bigger ones are going to be right around 10 or 11, uh, excuse me, 10 or 11 dollars, and, uh, you know, you gotta be careful because when you're trolling in the river, if that bait gets too far out, you get hooked on the bridge, you just lost 10 bucks, and you gotta have a couple of extra in your in your tackle box. So don't be afraid to buy extra, especially don't be afraid to buy multiple colors. Oh, I'm moving too much up here. I can't, I got ADD. If I was standing still, I'd be rocking. You guys would feel like I was on a boat. I'm not even lying. So, there is a, winter fishing is always different, of course, from the spring. You know, we're, we're right around the corner with spring fishing, and that just changes everything. The white bait's all over the flats. I mean, ideally, as a captain, a greenback is my number one go-to bait, of course. Not during these times right now, because we're adjusting to the winter. But when springtime comes around, March hits, that water's warmed up. It's game time. You load up as much as bait as you can, you get a chum bat, and you go work the flats. You work the flats, there's a lot of schools starting, which I'm happy to see there's actually a decent amount of schools up our way, a redfish kind of getting together now. And it's nice to see catching a bunch of rat reds now. And I don't know if you guys agree with it or not, with the redfish being closed, but as a captain, that we're out on the water over 200 days a year, I think it's a very wise decision, and I think we should keep supporting it and keep the redfish and the snook closed because it's, I mean, if we, if we tear up what we have now, we're not, nothing for our kids, our grandkids, all that's going to be done. And I think we need, to be, we need to speak more as a whole and stand behind those decisions. You know, even as a captain, I got people, that I, I call them meat mongers. They come on the boat, they want to feel the cooler. And as a captain, if I run four or five days in a row, and I have four or five people that want to fill the cooler, 
on my part, how am I doing my part if I allow them to catch their legal limit every single day, four or five days in a row, and I just took out 60 trout from the water? How does that make me, I can't, I personally can't do that. So I, I limit my clients to tell them, look, you wanna catch fish? That's fine, we're not gonna limit out. Everyone's not gonna catch their limit. We're gonna catch enough for you guys to eat tonight, and that's it. Some people like it, some people respect it, but it's just the way we have to be. It, it's just, it just that's, that's how it's gotta be, and I think closing snook and closing red for another two or three years, I'm, I'm okay with it. We want that, we want that, those fish to come back with a vengeance. We want them to come in the bay by huge numbers, and the numbers have dropped in the last three years, and that's that's a big deal. I mean, we were seeing schools of redfish off Pappy's Point three years ago. They were 500 plus fish. You see a school of redfish at 500 fish, you you can tell it's a, it's a pretty dramatic thing. Then the year next year comes by, that school dropped down to 250 to where this past year just now we got. We're chasing a school of 100 fish. Where everyone, there's 30 boats trying to chase 100 fish on one flat, which isn't good for the fish either because they're getting pressured every single day. And the numbers have dropped, so I'm a huge supporter of keeping the redfish in the snow closed. I know there's been a little controversy here and there on Facebook, all kinds of stuff, but the captains in my area all got together and there was some captains from this area as well and they went up to Tallahassee to make that rule in effect to close snook and redfish and I'm glad they approved it because it's the best thing that could happen to us because that red tide this year folks that was bad it was a bad I know you guys got it we we personally in the Tampa Bay the armpit of the bay where the closest it got to us was Pinellas Point so we were fortunate for it not to hit our area, but the media made it, to, I mean, the media made it to be where it was just terrible. And a lot of captains felt it this year, especially with the captains, like even the news that they did up north, they made all the snowboard snowbirds feel like, oh my God, you can't come, can't come down to St. Pete or Clearwater because there's dead fish everywhere. Yeah, we, it was bad at one point and luckily, it kind of cleaned up and got out of here. I mean, some places got hit worse, and uh, that's another, that comes to a whole other thing. If you guys want to do anything or try to help to be a part of anything, that Captains for Clean Water is a great movement to get behind, and they're trying to do all kinds of stuff with the whole sugar fields and all the stuff in Okeechobee. So if you guys haven't heard of Captains for Clean Water, look into that, it's actually a really, really great foundation that's actually trying to do good for us. So uh, definitely look into that. Also, uh, I mean, any questions so far? Anybody have any questions? Anyone? Uh, if you guys also, on Sunday mornings, uh, we host a fishing show on 102.5 The Bone, uh, which it's from eight to nine every Sunday morning. And uh, we talk fishing, we like to have a good time. We love to take calls in. Um, that happens from eight to nine, and we just recently finished our uh, first season. Okay, we got a question. What do you think about throwing bucktail jigs? I, I like bucktail. I, I, and that's one thing. I grew up on those. Yeah, there, I can tell you this. There's a guy on that I follow on Facebook, and this guy posts almost every night, and he has a pig, whether it's a snook or a redfish, and he's throwing bucktail jigs. I know people live and die by them. I heard there was a, what, what's your favorite color that you like to throw? White with uh, like a red stringer tail or something on it. Okay. See, I've heard, I've heard some of the neon, the neon colors, like the neon pink with that, it's almost, almost like a glitter tail, right? Yeah. Yeah. There's some people that I know that they only have that in their tackle box. They love them. I've used them. I've actually, when was the last time I used them? Might have been this past summer. My, uh, fit, you know, almost when you're a typical place that I used them last year was off the Clearwater Pass, off that jetty, and bouncing it like you normally. I mean, that's it's the same kind of motion you want to do for almost anything you're doing. You're bouncing it up and down off the. And how big of a jig head are you using on that? How heavy? Uh, I don't know, quarter ounce. It depends on current. So if it's of course if the current's stronger, you're going heavier. Go ahead. 
What's the heaviest you throw? I don't know. Probably an ass. Maybe even bigger than that. Okay. That's pretty big. Well, I... If you're out here or something and this current's ripping, or even in clear water pass, if it's ripping through there, go ahead and throw it out and let it come. Yeah. Now, as it comes back, are you, are you giving it the same motion up and down as it sinks? Pop it up. Just switching it, throw it out. Let it move with the tide. And when it gets right in front of you, you know, man, throw it back out. You have any luck with flounder using that as well? Not really. I've never. Up north. What's that? Up north. Up north. Of course you do. Yeah. Okay. Where? How far up north? New Jersey. Oh, okay. Way north. <laughs> way north. I'm thinking maybe Homo Sass or something. I'm way off. <laughs> yeah, that's way north. Yeah. Yeah. I don't want to see that gas bill. So. Uh, you guys have any other questions? I know we it's, we're talking about uh, you know some of the, the some, same fish that are on that. How many of you guys are going to fish that tournament coming up here? Any of you guys in it? All right. Um, we're talking about the drum, the sheephead. Does anybody else like also? Excuse me. So we're fishing docks as well at this this time right now. And with the sheephead, if you get those filler crabs, same kind of deal on that same rig we were talking about. They will eat them up. Even if you can find some good structure, they're hanging on that structure, dropping that fiddler crab on a little bit of a weight, small hook. That's been working really well as well. Question? Okay. Uh, any other questions about uh, fishing? What you got? Do you chum it all in the winter? Um, okay, I know it's kind of funny. So my buddy laughed at me the other day, but we bought, we had a lot of shrimp. And um, I pulled out the chum bag. And I threw some shrimp in there, and I threw them out in the winter time just to kind of see what would happen. We had a couple blowups, but when it comes to fishing with white bait, when I have a boatload full of white bait, there is an entire live well that is dedicated to chum. Every single spot. It's also one of those things where, you know, you go to a spot and you don't know how much time you want to give it. You know, if you get to a spot, you pull up. You got your tides moving, you got decent water, and you throw a chum bat out there and nothing happens, I'm not staying longer than 15 minutes. I'm gonna give it 15 minutes because I know if there was some fish there, not saying now you could come back two hours later to the same spot, do the same exact thing, and they blow up everywhere. It just might not be eating at that time. But chumming is a huge part of mine because it's also, it's kind of exciting for clients too. People who've never really fished salt water. A lot of people I've been taking out, you know, they're from up north, all they do is fresh water. So you're like, all right guys, we're gonna get them. You know, you start pumping them up. I know we're gonna get them because I was there four days in a row and I know how they acted. So you get, and sometimes it backfire. But you get there and you're like, all right guys, get your baits ready. You throw 20 pieces of bait out and every one of them gets smoked by a snook. You're like, all right, it's time to go. I've been in that same situation and thrown the chum and everyone has been eaten and not one touched the hook. They all become hook shot. I've gone down to 15 pound leader and a small hook and they just wouldn't eat it. They just, sometimes they just, they're, I mean, snooks is a very, compared to the triple tail, the snook is an absolute genius on the water. It's one of my, one of my favorite fish to, to chase, pursue, one of my favorite fish to catch. Now, yes, chumheavy.com every single time. If I have white bait in the boat, I'm chumming. Even if I do an offshore, obviously, you no know, offshore, you want to have even more chum, but um, come snapper fishing, I'm chumming. I, I like to do certain times of the year, if I have a ton of bait left over and I don't try to catch one of the big snook at the boat ramp and chum all the boat ramp, I'll take those fish and freeze them. And then come, and who knows, come now tarpon season. <laughs> You know, with the way I didn't, I didn't get a chance to get into tarpon. We could talk some, real quick about tarpon, but yeah. you know, I fish the Skyway Bridge. Come, you know, when the time comes, we're fishing the Skyway, and there's two ways I fish tarpon. One way is anchoring up with a buoy on it that you're able once you to hook up, you throw that buoy off your boat, and you start chasing that fish. Now, one of the ways I do fish fishing the Skyway is thread fins. You throw the net, fill up your live wells. Fill up two five-gallon buckets. They don't even have to be alive. You keep some alive, and you have a designated cutter on the boat. Try to get yourself a nice pair. I mean, the best thing that works is trauma shears. 
You can get him at gun shows, or if a buddy of yours is in the fire department, he might be able to get you one. But you set up in the back, you got the tie going out, you're sitting at the skyway. You have one person throwing cutting and throwing thread fins out each side of the boat. And they're moving. They're, as soon as you drop them next to the boat, you're creating an entire chum slick that goes all the way to the back of the bridge. All the way. And you have two people that now you take a live thread fin, cut the tail off, drop both those baits, just drop them right in the water. You want those baits to go right along with that chum slick. Now, some people don't know, as that bait starts drifting back, you keep that bail open. Sometimes we'll turn the Sometimes we'll turn the rod around like this. We're holding a rod like this and we're letting the line come out. You keep your finger on that line and the tide slowly taking your bait along with that chum slip. Now, the tricky thing is to learn how to figure out the difference of the tide and when a big old tarpon comes up and bites your bait. Once it happens to you one time, you know from that moment on, you have a fish on. So you're still letting your bait, and you wanted to let, if you're probably, say you're off the, the bridge about 40 yards, and you have your chum slick going all the way back. You know, you let your bait go all the way till it passes the bridge, then reel it back in, start it all over. But as you got your line, your finger on that line, and that line's going, you know, it's just going with the tide, and all of a sudden it just starts ripping like crazy. You're like, yep, he picked it up. Flip that bail, so you're using, I'm using a, anywhere between a five and a seven knot circle hook, 60 pound leader because I want to hook more fish. Use a 60 pound leader, that fish takes off with that line in your hand, flip the bail, reel down on it, once you got it reeled down and tight, then you can give them a couple good yanks and now you're off to the races. The other way to fish them, if you're at Egmont or you're at um, uh, B Point, yes, thank you. You know, you, you got to get into the drift and using, I've used thread fins there and we've done well because everyone else was using crabs and you know, it's a hit or miss depending on which bait's going to work better. But with that, you got to have a little bit of, a little bit of boater etiquette, get in that, you want to get in that drift. You see, as everybody starts, you know, stay, you, you're starting at the ferry docks and you drift all the way out and you got to come all the way back around, get inside that drift. Using pass crabs, that's a fun thing to do. I love catching pass crabs. Or you can buy them and be prepared. But we like to use the pass crabs, hook them in the side, and you just drop them down. You're just moving with the current. Same kind of deal. Now you can do the same method I was talking about with the tarpon, with the thread fins, and keeping your line and letting the tide take your line as well. That's worked as well. I have a uh, couple good buddies who just have the tarpon locked in every summer. They, they, I've learned from them. I've learned different ways from them. I've put my own little twist on them, but it's definitely a fun time of the year when the tarpon come. We've actually even doing that same kind of drift on Egmont, on the south side of Egmont, we've actually got into permit using, using crabs. We've caught a nice permit in the middle of trying to catch the tarpon. So uh, that's a fun thing to do as well. I love doing it when you're fishing it at the Skyway with the cut bait. You know, it's 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 a fun. It's not the most exciting thing. You got to switch up. Everyone's got to take their turn cutting the bait. But when it's on, it's on. So that's uh that's one of my favorite things to do as well. Come summertime. Any other questions? Also, um, real quick, uh, if you guys go on Flats Mafia's YouTube. We just recently came out with our TV show. Now, if you watch our TV show, you will not learn how to fish. <laughs> You're not going to learn how to fish if you watch our TV show. I'm giving you the warning now. <laughs> but if you want to see a, good, a group of guys out on the water, having a good time, fishing, Homo Sassa, Scalloping, Key West, uh, we've actually, we filmed, one of the good things about our show is we filmed the episode in our backyard, right here in Tampa Bay. And it literally was the worst day of fishing I think any of us have ever been. But we didn't edit it. We didn't add any cool fish in there. No, we showed you how fishing is sometimes. And sometimes it's just not good. But we make the best of it. So it's definitely an entertaining show. It's a definitely twist off of all the other shows that are out there. And much respect to all the other, excuse me, 
Much respect to all the other captains. They're going to teach you how to fish on their TV show. We're just going to make you laugh and entertain you. So if you want, you can check it out on our YouTube page. Every one of our episodes is already out. Uh, and we will air again on Sun Sports come October. That's what we're working towards. But uh, I just want to thank everyone for coming out. Once again, a big thank you to Old Salts Foundation for uh, allowing me to come and speak. You guys have actually been outstanding and allow me uh, to huff and puff up here on my... <clears throat> I should have brought my asthma pump. That's what I should have done. But thank you guys very much. And uh, I'm going to leave a couple cards up here at the front if you guys want a couple cards. I also have some cool magnets. So uh, thank you again. You guys have a good night.